my name is Sarah Rixen. And my name is Johannes Scher. We're studying geology at RWTH Aachen University. And we are happy to present you our Endogeny Dynamics movie project. Oh my god, there's a bubble below my sieve. How is that possible? Whoa! There's an experiment about what I've experienced a few days ago. Let's make an Ender movie about that. Our experiment is about the movement of oil or gas in a water wet porous rock and how it is hindered by capillary seals. A requirement for the movement of hydrocarbons through a pore throat is a pressure difference between the two fluids. In our scale experiment we use different types of sieves to simulate water wet pore throats and the air we pump below the sieve is analog to hydrocarbons in the earth. We strongly recommend to wear safety goggles because our experiment is incredibly dangerous. At first we use a sieve with a very large mesh diameter, around about 7 mm, and as you can see the air bubbles are not held back underneath the sieve. But when you take a closer look, you can see that the air is held back to a certain degree. So now we use a sieve with a smaller mesh diameter, around about 0.8 mm. Now see what happens. Our air column has now reached a height of about 22 mm. At this point, the capillary pressure in the pore throats is not big enough to hold back the air underneath the sieve and it comes to a blowout. But not all of the air leaks through the pores. A little column is still held back by capillary resistance. We then use a bigger sieve with a larger pore throat radius to compare the results. We know it's hard for you to see, but the air column is now much smaller. It's easier to see the accumulated air bubbles from above. At first we look at the bigger sieve. And now the smaller one. In the model of a sieve, the water is over the air, but the air is held back by the capillary pressure in the pore throats. This capillary pressure equals 2 gamma times cosinus theta over r. It's also defined as the pressure difference across the fluid-fluid interface. Gamma is the interfacial tension, theta the wetting angle, and r is the pore throat radius. 
The equation for the height of the air column is given by h equals 2 gamma times cosinus theta over g times r times delta rho. g is the gravitational constant and delta rho the density difference between water and air. In our experiment, gamma is given by 72 millinewton over meter, theta is 30 degrees, the radius is 0 0.4 millimeter, and delta rho is 999 kilogram per cubic meter. That means the maximum height of the air column in the small sieve is 32 millimeter. As you remember, our air column was 22 millimeters high. For the bigger sieve with a pore throat radius of 0.7 millimeters, the maximum height is 18 millimeters. In our experiment, we got about 10 millimeters. To leak through the pores, the air has to reach a critical pressure that is higher than the capillary pressure, PC. We can now calculate the capillary pressures for the two sieves. For the small sieve with a pore throat radius of 0.4 mm, the critical pressure is 311 Pascal. In the bigger sieve with a pore throat radius of 0.7 mm, the capillary pressure is 178 Pascal. This verifies our scientific observations that it is easier for the hydrocarbons to leak through larger pores. Nein, das ging scheiße. Nein, das ging scheiße. Mein Name ist nicht. Nein, Leute, ich sehe sie nicht scharf. Achtung, Achtung! Herr Sifte. Experiment. Hi, ich bin.